Hey, good afternoon, folks. My name is Paul Rinkin. Um, I am from FEDSAS. I'm based in KZN. And welcome to today's Tech Talk Tuesday at 2. Um, I would have to thank Rian for getting that alliteration together. Um, and I think it's going to start sticking. We're going to get a lot more information flow going through. Um, Rian, yeah, I think you must take credit for that. So, yeah, welcome everybody to the session. Um, we appreciate your involvement. I think Rian and Norman just popped in there quickly. A little bit of introductions, folks, as to what we're going to be doing today. Um, we are talking technology. We're talking our center of technology. Rian Funnenberg is our um, manager of center of technology. And we're talking to Norman Colling, um, director of registered communication, which we had hosted recently. Um, that it's also just an opportunity. I think there's some more information that's come through. Um, I think we're talking case studies today. We also would like involvement. Um, so we are asking people at a certain time to put your hand up to volunteer to come through onto our panel, um, just to ask questions and to engage with us a little bit more. Um, the last 100 days, and I think we have gone through 100 days of lockdown, everybody, let us say this very carefully, almost everybody has gone online. Um, we were previously online for about two years, so we kind of had a bit of an understanding of the process. Our next step within the FEDSA circle is to make this more interactive. Um, really so that it is a meeting process and we debated whether we should do this in a full meeting or a webinar process, but we went with a webinar process, but we are going to invite people to come through later um, into the session. Um, those of you that are not familiar with um, the, the process that we run, the Q&A box is, is sitting down below you or you should be able to see the Q&A box. If you wouldn't mind, just if you've got any questions, type in there and maybe just let us know where you are at the moment and how you are doing. How are your schools doing? Um, your grade 12s and your grade 7s have gone back. Um, how is the, is the school environment looking for you? Are you comfortable? Is there still apprehension around? Is there still nervousness around? Maybe just let us know whereabouts you are as well. We're expecting around about 70 odd people to attend today and numbers aren't quite there yet, um, but we will look, look forward to those numbers. So please feel free to interact with us through that Q&A session. And as I say a bit later, we're going to ask a few people if they want to come on board to come through to our panelists and to discuss details with us um, in, in regards to this discussion that we have. We are recording this session. And after I've now invited people to come on as panelists, they're probably going to panic about the next thing. We are also streaming at Facebook Live. Please, folks, don't panic. We're all humans. We're all in this process together. Um, so we are, we are sending it via Facebook Live so that it can get out to other areas as well, people that might not have been logged on to the process. And for those that are attending, we will send you a shared file of all the details later so you can share it with the rest of your governing body, governing body members, wherever they may be. Um, just briefly, and my last slide before I hand over to Rian, our provincial managers, I must have known that a bit of Afrikaans work in the I must have said that the land, from the Oeskap to the Westkap, just the list of the bestuurders and all the contact person that you and um, please get in contact with them. Um, if you do need further information from a provincial viewpoint, please get hold of them and make contact with them and make sure that you can get in touch with them. And um, with that, I'm going to stop sharing and hand over to Rian. Um, and yeah, Rian, thank you very much. And Rian, I'm sure you'll go through the introductions, introduce Norman. Um, but thanks very much for this process and thanks for, for coming on board with it. Very happy. Uh, yeah. Good afternoon. Um, all the good salutations to the people around the country. I think uh, the last webinar that I attended at the end, I want to shout and tell everyone, it's so nice seeing you. It's so nice seeing other faces. Uh, it's, it's, I think getting to 100 days of, of this is, is now getting a little bit long. Um, yeah, and I think ons wil sociaal wees, ons wil met mekaar gesels en keir en koffie drink en gelukkig sien ek drie gezichte op die skerm, uh, maar ek sien as een lang lijst mense in die, in die uh, blokkie van mense wat deelneem, so baie welkom. Ek gaan vinnig inspring, uh, we're just going to do an introduction uh, and, and a brief introduction, introduction at that, but I want to take us back to uh, maybe the start of the year and uh, why the Center for Technology exists, um, but maybe just let me run through the through the uh, logistics here. Today we, we're featuring Tech Talk and Norman, welcome and thank you for joining us again. It's it's probably been six weeks or so since we last spoke, and I'm very happy to be talking again because we've got actual real live data about schools onboarding and using the product. So I'm very interested to hear what they say and, and very excited to see that schools are benefiting from the solutions that the FEDSA Center for Technology is putting forward. Um, as a, a little bit of a background welcome, I, I have to once again celebrate that last week our Tech Talk at Two 
was an international event. We had a speaker from, uh, well, he was, he's a Spanish speaker uh, and he was sitting in the south of France. So we had two European countries represented in a way and, and talking about uh, the very, very important issue of cyber security, cyber threats, uh, virtual safety, where we are so aware of number one in South Africa and the whole world, COVID and, and the viral pandemic issue and, and taking care of ourselves. But in South Africa specifically, very aware of physical safety, um, arm response, alarm systems, locks, keys, gates and everything. And there's a real world of virtual uh, threat, virtual safety, but not so bad that we cannot manage that risk. And I think that's the takeaway that I wanted to get from that. So if you're interested, um, please pop me an email. I can send you the link to that one. Unfortunately, last week's one cannot be posted because it was a multinational uh, company and a member of the Center for Technology. We, we will not be hosting that one on our YouTube channel, which bring me, brings me to my next point. Um, all the tech talks or most of the tech talks at two that we've been hosting over the last, what's it, 10 weeks? <laughs> I don't remember when we started with lockdown, will be um, on our FETSAS YouTube channel. So it's not a separate channel. You go to YouTube, you search for FETSAS and you subscribe to the channel and there you will see the tech talks at two. So if you missed something with the previous one with registered communication, the one with D6 where we can use that tool as a screening app, the one with AVS uh, where they help schools onboard Microsoft Teams, uh, and the list goes on. Fortinet, uh, the first one of Fortinet where we spoke about uh, security. So there's a lot of them. And the fun one is Resolute Robotics where they show kids how to make uh, say from grade six onwards, how to make your own liquid soap dispenser uh, instead of buying the solutions that we need to safeguard our kids with um, sanitizing, we can have them code and uh, manufacture the solution by means of it. So go have, have a look at that one. Ek is rechtig opgewonde oor dit wat ons kinders eerder kan maak as wat ons net met geld kan recht maak. Kom ons leer in die geleentheid, nie net ons wiskunde en wetenskap nie, maar kom ons doen so'n bykie Codering and robotic out So yeah, the, the oplossings of the opnames on op YouTube videos. And then uh, Paul said that we wanted some volunteer panelists. Uh, it's kind of triggered in about 10, 15 minutes. So if you're ready to, to raise your hand at that point in time, we really want to have a discussion uh, about these things. The Center for Technology is actually at the center of the discussion today. And it's, it's my privilege to be leading the Center for Technology and trying to find solutions for schools. And this is the serious stuff that we need to be talking about. We want schools to not just embrace technology or the 21st century for the sake of doing it. It's a means to an end and the end needs to be either uh, more efficient, uh, better quality. We wanna see quality education for all in this country and definitely raise the uh, quality of education. I always reference the Schools Act um, and the obligations of a school governing body, where it is said, uh, section 20, that the school governing body needs to develop the school, not maintain it, but develop the school for better quality education for all. And, and that's my mandate in the Schools Act that was written in 1996 to say, let's go forward, let's work forward. So one of the issues uh, or focus points for the Center of Technology this year is the idea of introducing the thoughts the uh, position, the thinking of the CIO at school. All things are turning digital. All things are more information-based. All things are uh, device and uh, internet. Cloud is, is becoming a new word. You know, it's, it's, it's lingo franco for, for so many things. No, it's in the cloud. You know, how do you pay? No, it's in the cloud. Uh, how do you receive it? No, it's, I mean, take a lot comes via the cloud to your house. Um, so all things are becoming more and more dependent on the information highway. And we think it's very valuable for a school to also introduce in the management and governance structure, the thinking of the CIO, the chief information officer. And in that, look for solutions that would enhance the processes at school. It's not just a techie that runs around with a screwdriver and fixes a computer or a projector. It's someone with a strategic executive uh, thinking around how do we make school better. For this year, we started off with the 2020 focus and this newsletter, I'll quickly flash to it. It's on our website, newsletter one of 2020 under technology. 
and we introduced the thoughts of the CIO and then we gave the CIO three focus points as if we were, um, uh, I don't want to say a good profit or bad profits for this year. We said, if you do the following three things as a focus point for 2020, you'll take your school in a very good direction. The first one was that of security, virtual and physical. The year started off with a few bad incidents as far as learners, especially in Gauteng, uh, physical safety. Um, then there is the issue of virtual safety and security, um, the uh, internet data type hacks and, and theft, and I see Poppy is now in the news this week, um, safeguarding security. So there was a focus on internet uh, as well as physical security and safety, and who knew that we were going to be facing one of the biggest pandemics uh, as far as health goes this year. The second focus point kind of slipped by the way from, from January till now that there was load shedding. And, and the, the idea was to say that we've got to safeguard, our, safeguard ourselves so that the internet lights stay on. We can go without lights. I can turn my room's lights off now and you'll see a fainter picture of me. But if we have the internet lights burning, we can make use of so many online services and continue to use those. We can access learning platforms, uh, Wikipedia, Khan Academy, all the, all the material that is so handy and management tools. Uh, we can use um, online banking, uh, make use of Pastel or Sage online, uh, the likes of the D6 Plus platform, which is a web-based platform and even today's solution, which is registered communication, which is all internet and tech-based. And if the lights are off, uh, <laughs> we, the internet, if the lights are off, we can still continue. Even at home at night, if your lights are off, but you have a streaming device, your internet is on, you can watch all your favorite shows on Netflix or DSTV now, just on a smaller screen and, and you can still be okay. The last one is very pertinent for today's discussion. We wanted the CIO to focus on the economy and we put it in three brackets. Uh, how to save money, because the economy was already telegraphing in January that it's a tight year, uh, so much more now. So how do we use tools that save money? Number two, how do we use tools that make us more efficient? So spending the same money and getting more bang for buck. Or number three, how do we use tools that actually make us money? And there's some reward schemes and, and, and these kind of things. So, so that you actually get money in and, and not just at a neutral place. So I want to really push you guys to looking at newsletter one of 2020. I just took a screenshot here. I'm not going to page through it now. If you go to our website at the bottom of the page, www.fetsos.org.za, uh, under newsletters, go to the technology tab and you'll find newsletter one of 2020. And that's the focus. We've got a reference in that newsletter to a document that's hosted on the website, uh, on the internet, with a lot of service providers under each category, who can help with safety and security, who can help with load shedding and keeping the internet lights on, and then who can help with the economy? Where can we use better tools to save money or to be more efficient? And that leads to today discussions, uh, today's discussion in with Norman. So I think number one, uh, a great solution because it's a compliance uh, issue. Uh, number two, a great solution because it's much cheaper than the traditional form. And I, I told him before, and it's kind of not a question of why, it's a question of why not? Why not save money? But number three, the efficiency. And I'm going to let Norman speak to that based on a case study, uh, I think since about six weeks ago when we hosted this, uh, this session with them, I just wanted to get some feedback. And a lot of our member schools have onboarded with them with, with great success. As a last anecdote, maybe just this, uh, we all hear the word normal all the time. And I want to put us back into a frame that, uh, like these ladies say, it dries the washing using the very latest technology, a combination of solar and wind. Nothing is so abnormal because wind and solar was there from day one. So, so if, if it looks like an abnormal because it's different, it's actually just based on the fundamentals of normal. So Norman, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, yeah, uh, the audience is yours. Uh, if, if we were on a stage, I would tell the audience, uh, give, give Norman a hand as he joins me on stage. So uh, you can open your mic and continue. Thank you for, for being with us today. 
Rion, thank you very much. And um, hello, everybody on the other side of the internet. Uh, thank you for letting us and come and, as you mentioned, present a few case studies uh, to you. Um, we're in a very, very fortunate position in, in that the responses that we're getting from, from the member school is, is phenomenal. Um, one, one or two subtle learnings, uh, which I'll go through, uh, and, and they're, they're probably learnings that we, we, we hadn't really predicted up front um, when, when we speak about our, our solution, but I'll, I'll, as I said, I'll tackle that in a little bit more, more detail. So just as a recap, I, we, we were lucky enough to address you um, a couple of weeks ago, where we introduced the concept of our electronic registered mail. Uh, this, just a brief recap, the, the certain notices that the schools need to send to parents are, are very prescriptive in nature, um, right down to prescriptive as to how you can deliver those notices to, to parents. And schools, unfortunately, unfortunately have to make use of the concept of, of registered mail for, for certain of the, um, the demand type notices I'm, I'm referring to sort of section 41 as, a, as, as an example. Um, so our, our product set around registered email and registered SMS, allowing you to send your formal notices via electronic channels and not rely on paper. Uh, it, it has a, a, a no, or in our world, a no-brainer application in, in that it's much easier to send an email than it is to type out a letter and put it in an envelope and, and send the message. And, and really that's where we had pegged our, 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 our primary business case around the cost savings of going digital just in the distribution of these notices. However, what we very, very fortunately finding is that the responses we're getting from the schools all lead towards uh, the, the feedback that the schools are getting from the parents, from the recipients of these notices. Um, we, we call it activation. At the end of the day, the schools just want the parents to respond. Um, the, nobody wants to take legal action against a, a, a parent or parents. So if they are speaking to you, then it's, it's kind of half the, the battle one. And if you look at some of these, these quotations um, that uh, we've received over the last couple of weeks, you'll, you'll see that the, the primary theme um, in the responses we're getting from the schools is that the parents are being activated to contact the school and uh, engage with, with the schools, make a plan uh, in some shape or form. And, and this is, a, as I mentioned, the, the, um, the, the more surprising benefit that we've we found out of our, our channel. It's, it's not so much the ease of use, it's not so much the, the, the cheaper finance, the, the, the cheaper costs involved and the optics savings that the, the school gets to benefit. Um, but it's also the responses you, you, you're getting from the, or our, our schools are getting from the parents. And the re increased response rates um, also leads to uh, increased revenue collection, which ultimately drives uh, the school's ability to survive. The direct benefits from using registered email or registered SMS as opposed to, to paper, um, the, the easiest one to quantify is the revenue savings. So what I have on, on the screen is uh, just a revenue example. For a school that sends around 250 of these letters a year, um, the current registered post cost is around 30 Rand ex uh, which, which leads to that 7,500 Rand per year uh, postage bill. I purposely put there excluding stationery because within the postage bill there's, there's also printing and paper and envelopes uh, which, uh, which need to be purchased. In the registered email scenario, uh, there's obviously no stationery involved. Uh, all the schools have access to, to email and you'd use that exact same channel to, to distribute these notices. But straight off the bat, there's, there's a 40-odd percent saving in your direct OPEX costs. Um, by moving away from paper to digital channels. The additional benefits that, that, that we've seen, and, and these are, again, based on the feedback that we've been getting and the previous slide I, I showed, um, is, is really around the, the digital channels being more effective and more efficient 
than the manual paper channel. So what we're also finding is um, the, the delivery rates, the successful delivery rates of schools has, has increased dramatically. So a lot of the, uh, we get a lot of feedback saying that um, a lot of our previous letters get returned to us undelivered. And they also return to us undelivered after a, an extended period of time. So after three weeks or, or a month, that's only when the schools are being notified that the original letters uh, weren't able to be delivered. Um, the reduced time to deliver notices that the registered email and the registered SMS is really, they get delivered and I'll show you um, in a quick fire demo now, they get delivered at the speed of email or, or SMSs. So uh, the notices you send today get delivered today and you get confirmation of those deliveries today. Then on the bottom right of the, the slide, the res increased response rates and, and the increased collections, um, that, that is directly at, attributed to the, uh, the look and feel and um, the characteristics of a registered email uh, versus a, 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 a paper-based notice. And it's these increased response rates and, and collections that have the, by far the biggest benefit to the schools because as I said previously, an increased response rate getting the parents to speak to you will obviously result in uh, those increased collections as well. That is just a very, very high level overview and summary of uh, what we've been experiencing over the last sort of six weeks since our, our, um, our partnership commenced with, with FedTest. Uh, Rion and Paul, I know you wanted to jump in about now. Uh, just before I go into the quick fire demo. Yes, um, thanks, Norman. I just wanted to add about uh, the excluding stationary comment that you made there. Uh, I think a lot of us suddenly realized whilst working from home in lockdown that travel cost and travel time is actually um, a very real thing. Your day is so much longer now because you don't have to travel anywhere. So traveling to and from the post office or where it is that you do your... Um, delivery or mail, uh, registered mail, as well as the travel time. Travel time actually costs the human factor time. Um, so so there's, there's an additional cost to that. So yeah, it's a direct benefit in cost, but it's a huge, and I think we're gonna see the, the benefits in the efficiency now when you do the demonstration. So yeah, we are at the point in time we wanna invite five people to raise their hands. Um, sounds like a song, raise your hand, uh, to join us on a voluntary basis only, and hopefully we don't have 50 people <laughs> that want to join us. But uh, the Q&A can still continue as normal, so you can still type your questions in the Q&A, but we need five um, volunteers to join us on our panel uh, so that we can discuss and maybe ask Norman questions whilst he is busy with the demo so that we um, have that interaction. Um, okay, so three, two, one, go. Let's, let's see who raises their hands um, in the participants. Uh, there's one hand raised, it's down already. <laughs> um, okay, if, if there are no volunteers, no worries, but please, please be, be very open to that. Paul? One coming through into our panel already. So, okay, brilliant. Stefan's coming through. I'm just seeing if there's anybody else who's brave enough to volunteer. Folks, and I, you've got Jackie as well. I can see your names. I don't want to have to name and shame you. Eh? Um, so <laughs> there we go. There we go. We've got some more coming through. Thanks very much. Okay, brilliant. That will go on on the side. Norman, uh, you, can, you can quickly show us the demonstration, then we'll take questions and uh, discussions on that. Thank you. So what I have here is what, what I'm going to do is show you why we think the responses from parents is, um, is, is as good as it is. Uh, so I'll show you what the experience is for the recipient of these notices. So in order to receive a notice, you obviously need to send a notice. In front of you, the screen that I have is I've just typed up a normal email, a stock standard uh, email. Stephanie's asked me to add uh, her email address, which, which I have done. Um, so from your perspective, you, in, the, in the two field of the email, you type up the parent or parents' email addresses. Uh, you would put in your, your subject line, whatever it might be. 
you type up the, the body of the email as you would normally do and you add in any attachments, uh, whichever notices you, you, you would like to extend. Stock standard email functionality. The only difference that, uh, the only item that you'll do differently is once you're on board with us, we will give you a CC address, that a mail address that you add into the, the, the CC field of the email. And it is that simple. So we don't dictate to you which platforms to use. You can do Outlook, Outlook Express, Gmail, uh, any of the webmail serv services, really doesn't matter. The only, the only prerequisite we have from our side is this CC address that you, that you add to your email. And you click send. So for those of you who, um, who um, are relying, relying on paper to send a lot of these, these messages, uh, you can start the clock. I have sent that, that message, and now we can see how long it takes to, um, for that message to get through to the other side. What I have here, the screen that I, I've shared now, is my live inbox. So a uh, little disclaimer, if something pops up here that, that, that shouldn't, I apologize in advance, and it's probably spam. <laughs> but, here, but here you, you can see the, the, the message that um, I, I sent myself. Um, dear parents, let me just make this. Uh, sorry, let me hack here quickly. So here's the message. Dear parents, uh, attached letter, and so on and so forth. And here is the, um, the, the attachment that I had added. A few minutes after receiving this first email, the second email that me is now a parent received is the registered letter, this re registered email, email here, and this is the digital version of your traditional registered post. And you'll see it's exactly the same. Um, it's just labeled registered email uh, from our servers. Uh, so we don't touch the, the content of your, your message, so the body of the email is exactly the same and it's got the, the same attachment. And then the third email that, that we receive, that me as the recipient, the parent receives, is this track and trace report. So traditionally in the paper world, um, the parent doesn't know that there's a, a, a registered letter that's, that's been sent to them. If they don't get that little white slippy then they're not aware of any, any letter that's been sent to them. In the digital world, we can proactively share that track and trace report with them. And, and the track and trace report looks like this. There are a whole lot of attributes to, to the message, um, confirmation of the sender and the, the recipient. So that happens to be the address that I sent the message from. Norman at Regcom is the recipient. There are all the dates and timestamps. Uh, we confirm the content of the message. So here is the subject line that, that I had um, that, that I'd included. Here is the body of the message. This is all in the track and trace report. If I scroll down, I will even see the attachment. So this is the attachment to the email that we embed in that track and trace report. And then further down is, is the technical mumbo jumbo about how this email went across the world uh, which IP addresses it hit, and so on and so forth. And last but not least, it, it's signed with uh, a class three electronic signature, which makes everything legal as per our electronic comms act. I'll scroll back to the top here. The fact that the parents also receive this track and trace report, we believe is the reason that they are activated, the reason why they respond. Uh, because quite simply, once, once they've once they've got the, the track and trace report, it's a scenario of I know that you know that I know that you know that the message has been, been sent. Uh, so there's never a scenario where a parent can say, oh, but I didn't get it, or oh, but I wasn't aware, because they're getting the evidence of the email that, uh, that they were actually aware. So that there is the quick fire um, demo, really showing the recipient experience, which we believe ties into the comment that we received from, from our parents, I mean, from the, from the member schools and, and our partner schools about, um, about the, the response, the improvement in the response rates that they have been getting by using our solution. 
Brilliant. Just to cover both bases, it works very similar or exactly like that for an SMS. Um, maybe just speak to the SMS solution without necessarily showing us. Uh, yes. So there was a, a question it, uh, from Henry around, or a comment from Henry around a prerequisite to this solution is that the parents need to be able to receive the electronic notices. And Henry, you're absolutely correct. Uh, if the parents don't have access to email or uh, SMSs, then they're not able to receive the notices. And that's a, that's a, a decision that the, the relevant school would make, re how to distribute the notices. The reason that SMSs are, are very, very popular is that the, the population has a mobile phone, uh, at least one, if, if not more. Um, a large percentage of the population uh, has a, a smartphone of sorts, and every single person who owns a mobile phone knows how to get hold of a free Wi-Fi area and, and to manage their data, et cetera, accordingly. So the ability to send either an email or an SMS to a mobile phone is a very, very powerful tool. The ability then to send a registered email or a registered SMS to a mobile phone is even more of a powerful tool because then, then you add your formal notices to, to the same distribution channel. To send a registered SMS, we allow uh, 600 characters in, in your message. I think a normal SMS is around 160 characters. So 600 characters allows you more real estate to add more detail. But really sending a registered SMS is as easy as logging onto a portal with your, uh, a, a, your a username and password protected portal specific to your school. Um, selecting the registered SMS option, typing up your, your characters and clicking send. It is uh, that simple and the speed of the delivery and the, uh, is at the same speed as a normal SMS and the track and trace report that I showed you for registered email. Uh, has exactly the same look and feel as the track and trace report that is generated on the back of a, of a registered SMS. Brilliant. Um, maybe just, I uh, remember a question from the previous uh, demonstration that we had. Uh, I think the efficiency hunger is so high that um, when you do an email, you know you can send a bunch of emails uh, by adding addresses to the two box. Um, in essence, this is just an electronic process of an individual letter to someone. So you can't send the same letter to everyone and CC everyone in. So that is, that is uh, slightly counterproductive in your mind. If you're using email, it's still gonna be an individual email to each recipient. Otherwise, all the recipients get everyone's um, uh, contact. Uh, so, so, so that's just something to take note of. I don't know if you've got any feedback or comment on that. That is correct, Rion. Uh, an address is an address. So in the paper world, an address is 100 Smith Street, and, and that's the address you'd, you'd typically write onto an envelope. In the email world, an address is norman at registeredcommunication.com. And in the mobile world, an address is 083123, blah, blah, blah. Um, so if, if you bundling all your email addresses together, that means the same notice is going to all those ad addresses. What it does mean from a usability perspective is that um, it, it would typically be one email per student. Uh, and it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but, but your notices need to go to both parents or both guardians, uh, etc. So the same student letter can go to, let's call it mom and dad, forgive my terminology, but yes, mom and dad. Um, what, what you can't do is send, a, send student letter number one to you know, all the moms and all the dads. Yeah. But it's always been like that in the paper world, you do an individual letter. So, um, Paul, I don't know if you've got any questions or Stephanie, uh, Stefanie, I'm not sure if you're name. Can you tell us about the report? Or have you got your post? You can your microphone open and together with us as well. She is welcome. I'd like to give Stephanie a chance to come through. She's already told me that the hairdressers aren't open in her town, so she doesn't want her camera on. No, she didn't say that. Uh, but she did say that she wouldn't like her camera on, so I said, that's fine, I respect that. So I'm just going to ask you, you should be getting a message now, Stephanie, just to open your mic. Um, if we can get you unmuted, let's just see why we're not getting that done. And I'd really like to hear your input. There we go. Thank you very much. Your mic's now open and the floor is yours. 
Can you hear us, Stephanie? Let's try that again and let's see. Paul, I see your mic is muted. Uh, I've unmuted it and then it released. She might be on a cell phone, which is not always easy to find the unmute button. Okay, there we go. Can you hear us now, Stephanie? Nope, you're not getting that. If you have got a question, Stephanie, why don't you just please type it in the chat box as well, because now that you're sitting on the panelists, you can get to the chat box to communicate directly to us. So if you wouldn't mind typing something in, um, and I'm, yeah, I'm just interested to hear your input a little bit into this discussion and where it's going forward from there. Um, I, I really like that comment. If I can just say, and also thinking back, um, when you send a registered mail before, you had to send it to each individual address in any case. So now when you send a communication, you're sending it to each registered email address, and it's the same sort of process. And I think we've got to understand that. I don't think that's a limitation. That's just a protocol thing that we've got to observe and we've got to understand from there. So I think that's really good from there. Folks, if there are any other questions, please throw them in. Um, now's the opportunity to ask. Uh, I think this whole process of registered communication is fantastic. It's, it's really put us in place that we can run through um, in a better way of communicating and with a, a sure way of communication as well. Um, yeah, I just want to, Jackie's just said she'd like to, uh, let me open Jackie's mic. Um, yeah, Jackie, can you hear us? Yeah, hi, go for it. Yeah, I just uh, wanted to say how well this fits in um, with your whole drive on CEOs for schools and, and making schools more efficient and effective. Um, yeah, so I think, I think it's a, a nice step in the right direction of, of where you're trying to take your school. Yes, yeah, I, it, it really resonates with, with the newsletter one that we started the year with, um, more efficient, uh, better use of tools, but definitely saving, saving a school money. And uh, maybe it's, it's, it's time for the, the brief advertisement scenario, but uh, we've got a special FETSAS member only deal with registered communication at a 5% discount. So it's, it's not necessarily massive, but other... <laughs> Non-member schools would not get this. So we're trying to really bring value, but the value is actually in the use of it. And as a governor uh, at a school uh, where my kids go myself, I think for me, the, the, the number one win is what the schools are saying. It's not necessarily the cost and the efficiency and the delivery and just the compliance with, with the Section 41 process, but the activation or the interaction from the parents. Uh, I think our new generation is more... Um, yeah, more responsive to the electronic and digital communication rather than a piece of paper that gets delivered or a pink slippy that, that arrives and they might think they're never going to go fetch it because then they can say that they never got it. Uh, you know, it, it, it stays difficult. This is real time. So, so from my side, I really think it's a value add to the school. So thank you to Registered Communications for, for the deal. If you want to onboard, Norman, how do they go about uh, a next step? More questions, more information, a little write up uh, a web page or, or just onboarding? I know we've, we've got a link on our FEDSOS web page, but um, take us through it. Yes, exactly. There is a link on the FEDSOS web page, so please uh, do browse to that link. Alternatively, on the on, on this, this brief slide deck, this case study deck that, that we prepared and shared with you today, um, Rion has, has got this and he um, distributed to, uh, to all attendees. On the last slide, there is this URL, which will take, us, take you straight through to the FedSAS RegCom onboarding form to allow both ourselves and FedSAS to manage your onboarding process. It's, uh, it's a very straightforward uh, form to fill in. You, you fill in the form, it comes through to us, you let us know how many message credits you'd, you'd like to purchase, and it normally takes us less than 12 hours to uh, get you up and running. So literally, you, if you fill in the form today, you could be sending your registered emails and registered SMSs as soon as tomorrow. Sure. That sounds great. Yeah, if, if you struggle with finding the link on our FEDSAS webpage, uh, on the homepage, there's a RegCom um, 
banner and you just click through that and it will take you to the onboarding process and then some more information. Otherwise, you're welcome to contact Norman, uh, his details also on that slide, or myself and, and I can just uh, forward your inquiry to them. But yeah, guys, that uh, concludes our, our very normal uh, webinar for the week. Um, uh, I feel like Oprah Winfrey, that was Tech Talk at two. So <laughs> glad you joined us. I see there's a chat somewhere, uh, maybe, no, it's not, not popping through, um, just to make sure. So yeah, from our side, uh, hang in there. Uh, it's, it's uh, I think, imminent that most schools will be receiving a lot more uh, learners shortly with that a lot of uh, increased activity and uh, especially around the finances, uh, the debtor cycle, the income cycle at school, that's going to need a lot of attention um, and, and, and possibly more so towards the end of the year when we really see the effect of, of the economy. But yeah, there's a tool in your hands that you can gladly use uh, on board through FEDSOS um, and Regcom and, and, and get yourself the discount there. And yeah, just be more efficient. Um, and from my side, Paul, I don't know if you want to have a, a last quick word, but from my side, that's about it. Just stay healthy, stay safe, and uh, be positive, but not that positive. Uh, <laughs> I hope you catch that one. So, yeah, we, we got to keep our minds in the right space. Uh, over to you, Paul. No, that's super. Thanks very much. The previous slide just showed you our webpage, and please visit that webpage regularly. Thanks very much, Norman and um, Rian, for your involvement. Really great to have you on board. Um, upcoming webinars, we are busy revising our schedule because the second and third term sort of disappeared amongst COVID. You can see what we had planned and obviously that took a, a, a left turn and left us. So we are looking at a new new schedule and that will be released by the end of the week. Um, I don't say, and I haven't said it for the last 100 days, I'm not going to say it now. We aren't going to get back to a normal schedule. But folks, there are things that are operational requirements that one needs to start looking at in your governing bodies. And that's what we're going to be starting to talk about, budget processes. Yes, folks, we have to budget for next year. We've got to try to work out a way of how we're going to budget. That's going to be a challenge, but we have to look towards that. So that's some of the ideas that we're going to be looking at in the revised budget as we run through it. Our e-learning platform, for those of you that aren't aware of it, please look at it, follow, go through in the process. It's a, a self-learning module process, really helps your governors understand what they, where they need to be at and where they need to be working on. Um, we obviously are on all the social media platforms, Facebook, uh, Twitter, um, YouTube, all those details, Instagram, have a look and follow us on that side there. Um, and then lastly, just before I go to the last slide, is these are provincial managers once again. I know some of them were on board today. Thank you very much for your involvement as well. Thank you very much for your drive out there. Um, but it's important, folks, to contact our provincial managers wherever you may be. Um, I was unfortunately in the background dealing with another school here in KZN at the moment. So, I'm bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks. Thanks for the thanks for the catch, Ryan. Hundred percent. Cheers, guys.